This is the Snowbiz Now Entertainment Network. I'm Nicholas Snow, your host, and this is a special spotlight on health. Right now I'm in the Villa Market in Bangkok, Thailand. Here, down the aisle, I have Dr. Richard D'Andrea, who along with John Wood has pioneered something called the 21-Day Detox, really a first step into transforming one's approach to their own health. We're going to do a tour, and uh, Dr. D'Andrea is giving the tour, but also with us is John Wood, and both of them have created the 21-Day Detox. So let's check in with what we're doing in the vegetable section and I'm going to give you about 10 minutes of the tour. But the other reason is because when you're getting the majority of your food, we want you to get the majority of your food from nature whole. If you were to look around anywhere in this store, what you would notice is that on the packaging, everything that they do, they're always mimicking the colors of nature. Because you're involved in being drawn to these triggers, these colors. Now when we come into a section like this, one thing that we begin to realize is, as we come into the produce section, huh, what is this? They have conventionally grown food, and they have organically grown food. What is the difference? Is that just something they're doing to make more money off of me? Because I notice that the organically grown food is much more expensive than the conventionally grown food. So let's come over here to the organically grown food section. Which I will definitely emphasize I will definitely emphasize the many different markets is much larger. If you were to go to Gourmet Market or if you went to the top of Emporium, these are places where you can get a lot of organic food and you, will, and you will definitely notice the sections are larger. But this gave us enough to work with and I thought the group would be very small and I wanted to move through easily. So when we come up to organically grown food, the first thing to realize is that organically grown food, what does that term mean? Organically grown food means that it has not been altered from nature in any way, shape, or form from the way that nature intended that it should be grown. There are no chemicals or pesticides or preservatives on it. It exists exactly as the way nature decided to grow it. Commercially grown food has no restrictions in that sense. There's no restrictions in the amount of pesticides or chemicals that they might use. And they might overuse two or three of them because they felt that day that those certain insects could have taken the crop and now you're being dosed with a heavier amount of chemicals. Another very important thing to realize about organically grown food is that organically grown food has not been genetically altered. What that means is that what they have done is they've decided that in order to grow food for everyone, they were going to genetically alter the food so that they can control the growth cycles and grow more food. Monsanto Pharmaceuticals would be the one that have been responsible for this, ConAgra, Cargill, Monsanto. If you have money invested in these countries, companies, it should end now. Because one thing that Monsanto intends to do with this is that by genetically modifying food, what will happen is that when the food grows, it will then start to pollinate other food across the globe. So that now they've established in court that if the pollinated food that is organic, that is genetically altered, pollinates organically grown food, and the next crop that the farmer grows has these genetic links from these genetically altered seeds, they can sue them. And in fact, they did. They sued a farmer in Canada who was growing organically grown cotton. Another farmer was growing conventionally grown, commercially grown cotton by Monsanto Pharmaceutical Seeds. It crossed over into the farm and pollinated their cotton. They took the farmer to court, sued him for $800,000. He could not pay the bill. They took his farm, his crop, and everything. The reason why they did this was not because a copyright was breached, but to establish in law that if this happens anywhere on the globe, they will own the products that now have their genetic markers in them. What's the danger? Genetically altered food has never been tested on human beings, ever. In addition to that, we know that genetically altered food is now carrying markers that will cause viruses and will cause allergic reactions. And in fact, we know that they're genetically altering 75% of the corn, 75% of the wheat. They're genetically altering much of the rice. So now, since they're genetically altering the food, they could put the genes from fish into tomatoes. They can put the genes from pork into potatoes. They can put human genes into swine into pigs. 
And the reason why they're doing this is that they say that they're actually taking the genetic potential from one thing in order to get the value of another. The reason why they used the genes from shellfish crab is because they wanted to make the skin on a tomato harder so that this way when they shipped it they wouldn't lose it and they would still make more money. But when you do do this, people who have shellfish allergies are now developing allergies to tomatoes. And now we're noticing that five out of, five out of ten people are now getting allergies to wheat. And they're getting digestive problems because of this. Gluten allergies are coming up. This is causing more problems with digestion. Ligands are being formed in the bloodstream, creating more of these allergic reactions. The one thing they do not tell you is that these companies now have put a genetic marker into the seeds called a terminator marker. Meaning that once that farmer grows that tomato, which he loves so much, and he tries to take the seeds and replant it, the seeds from the genetically from that genetic marker and that genetically altered food will not regrow. He will have to go back to the company to buy that tomato. Why would they do something like this? Are they really trying to feed as many people as possible? Or do they see the possibility that one day, because once they genetically alter a seed, they can put a patent on it. Once they put a patent on it, now they own all the tomatoes for the future that come from those seeds. So that anybody who will grow tomatoes in the future that gets seeds from those genetically altered seeds, they owe money to that giant corporation. So you will owe them money, your children's children will owe them money, the children in the future will owe them money, until they pollinate the entire planet, so that this way, they own all the food now, all of the seeds now, and just like somebody owns one thing like oil, they will own the food. Imagine that all the food will be owned by one, two, three companies. In fact, 60% of the food that is grown in America is owned by ConAgra, Cargill, and Monsanto. Not only do they own the food, they own the pesticides, they own the tractors, they own the land, they want to own the seeds, they want to own every level of this, all the way down the line, so they can own everything for your future, your children's future, the future's future. Now in some places, I don't necessarily encourage this, but I find it very interesting that in certain places in Hawaii, if you try to grow non-organic papaya, the Hawaiians will burn the entire crop, no matter who papaya it is, because they believe that by doing that, it is altering the people and changing the way that they and their bodies function. When we look at organically grown food, we can see that there are many options. One thing that you need to know about organically grown food, as studied by the United States Department of Agriculture, is that organically grown food has anywhere from 80 to 280 percent more vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients than commercially grown food. What that means is that if you're going to eat this lettuce and you're getting 80 to 280 percent more vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, then that means that you're spending less on supplements that are vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And you're getting that in your food. And we want to make sure that you're getting that in your food because we want the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the phytonutrients as they are designed to come from nature. Because let's take vitamin C for instance. But before we go on to vitamin C, let's mention some things here. The best place for you to get calcium is from leafy greens because the leafy greens contain vitamin C. And in order to get the calcium, vitamin C has to be present. You will not absorb calcium in your digestive tract unless the vitamin C is there. So the best place for you to get your calcium as women is by eating a lot of leafy greens, a big salad, maybe two times a day, one time for lunch, one time for dinner, always making sure that I'm getting these greens. I also want to make sure that when I'm using organically grown food, that what I'm doing when I'm getting organically grown food is I'm getting water that is closer to natural. It hasn't been completely altered. Many of the times when they grow organically grown food, they're going to use instead of certain fertilizers, seaweeds, things like this to add more minerals to the food. An organic farmer decides to compost their soil, meaning that they take many of the vitamins and fruits and nutrients, and when that all breaks down, they put it back in the soil, they turn the soil over, so that you're getting high nutrient content food. When I eat my food, and I sit down to a plate of food, I remember what Hippocrates said. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. So when I sit down to a meal, I look at it, and I go, hmm, are all the nutrients I need on here? How much of this is organic? And I'm getting the things that I need? What can I add to this? Certain herbs? I might take a dressing, and I'm going to use three or four herbs in this dressing, rosemary, oregano, 
fresh and alive. Notice that sometimes when you eat, you feel like your energy's gone down. The food should be energizing you. It is like fuel for your body. We want to make sure you're getting lots of energy. We want to make sure 100% sure that you're getting as many vitamins, minerals, and nutrients as you can get. To make 100% sure of that, something that we do in the detox, which we'll introduce next week, is wheatgrass. Over here, you'll see some wheatgrass. And at the juice bar, what you'll find is that wheatgrass has 108 different minerals in it. Because the raw winter wheat berry is designed to pull all these minerals out of the soil. By taking this wheatgrass and drinking about one ounce on an empty stomach, we always want you to do it on an empty stomach, because wheatgrass will pull stuff out of your stomach lining, can sometimes make you a little bit nauseous. So when you do it on an empty stomach, much better than having lots of food. So you take about one to three ounces of wheatgrass. Every day would be a good idea, especially during your cleanse, because we want to add more minerals and nutrients back to your body. We want to make sure that we're getting a lot of oxygen and nutrients into your bloodstream. Wheatgrass is very alkaline. Because it has all these minerals, it will start to shift your blood in a direction in which it's better able to carry oxygen. So that you can get more oxygen, more nutrients into your bloodstream. Let's move over into this section because we're going to talk a little bit about vitamin C. There are lots of fruits and vegetables that we can see specifically when we're focusing on fruits because if you look at fruits you'll see something very very powerful about them something that's usually very striking when you look around that really attracts people to fruit over and over again can anybody see what it is color color is so deep and alive and, and i'm gonna and you know when we make a salad i want your salads to be thought of when you get that bowl and you're going to make this salad I want you to make believe you're Leonardo da Vinci, or what is the name of a very famous Thai artist? Famous Thai artist painter. Do you know the name of one? Jacopan. Jacopan. You're either Leonardo da Vinci or Jacopan. And basically you're going to say, my body is a canvas, a blank canvas, and all of these colors I'm going to paint my body with. So when I make my salad, I sit down and I say, hmm, I want green. I want yellow, I want red, I want purple, I want different textures in there. I want to try to mix it up as much as possible so that when I come to look at fruits and vegetables as all the colors that are available here, and I put them in that salad, that salad is going to become like a meal. There are going to be so many fruits and vegetables and live things in there that when you put your dressing on top of it and you sit down to the salad, you will feel so nutrified. Because really what we're doing is we're painting the insides of our bodies with these colors. And probably these artists know, like many yogis know, like many monks know, is that there are different energy centers in the human body. Chakra. There might be a different name for that in Thai. Chakra. Chakra. And that each energy center, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And all the food matches those colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, like your heart, blue, indigo, violet. So we could see that probably I would pick this fruit and I would say, ah, this is probably very, very good for my brain and my nervous system. I bet you it's even known that if you take this dragon fruit and you eat it, it's very, very good for your brain. If I was to take some oranges, vitamin C, very, very good for this part of the body. Women, ovaries, also for uterus. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is something that we all want. But the thing we have to begin to know is that we got to ask ourselves, how much vitamin C would you actually get if you wanted a thousand milligrams of vitamin C? How many oranges would you have to eat in order to get a thousand milligrams of vitamin C in one shot in the beginning of the day? How many oranges do you think you would have to eat to get a thousand milligrams of vitamin C? Sixteen. You would have to eat at least something that would amount to three pounds. Let's say to get a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, you'd have to eat this many oranges. Nature does not design things so that you get large amounts of these things all at once. It was done this way because we turned into a pill-popping culture. We think everything is going to be solved with a pill. And if I could take more of these things, more of these things completely out of balance, then most of the time when you take in that much vitamin C, your body will use a small amount of it. The rest of it's going to come out in your urine. So when you eat all these amounts of supplements, I see people do this all the time when they come to the clinic to see me. One woman walked into the clinic to see me. She had a suitcase with a roller. She unzipped it, 
and she had 89 different supplements inside that suitcase. And she said, I'm having digestive problems. And I opened up the suitcase and I said, here's your digestive problem. Because if you put all of this in the body, your liver is going to go wild. What's going on? Why all these things at the same time? What am I supposed to do with them? I don't think I'm supposed to be having this right now. So your body's going to go out of balance because of that. That's the reason why we need people who know herbs, Chinese medicine, or understand how much of this goes. Very, very delicate. And every time you come back to a doctor who does Chinese acupuncture medicine, he's going to check again. Oh, I got to change this herb. I've got to change this, too much of this, drop this, because your body's changing. And in order to move it in the right healing direction, we have to make sure we're getting the right nutrients at the right time. So I thought when I was creating this program, what's the number one healer on the planet that knows everything, has known everything for a billion years? It's a woman. Mother Nature. Oh. <laughs> Praise Buddha. Okay, good. Mother Nature. Mother Nature has known for a long time, this amount goes in this, this amount goes in this. Mother Nature sends you a message. I make it this color. So if you're attracted to this and you're shopping and you say, I don't know why, I want papaya. And you go over to papaya and, you're, and you buy it and you go, I don't even know why I want papaya, but I want papaya. Because you put it in here, because your body's telling you, this center of energy in my body needs more energy. Digestion down here, orange and yellow. So papaya is good for? Energy. And what do we make the enzyme for breaking down food? Papayas, right? So see how all of this is designed in a specific way by nature in order to create a balance at a specific time that suits your body specifically. A doctor's job, a Chinese medical doctor's job, Japanese acupuncture doctor's job, Ayurvedic medical doctor's job. Our job is to sit back and watch nature do the work and to make sure that you are in tune with that nature because these things are like tuning an instrument for your body and all of them have very special gifts over here we will go over and we'll look at lime juice okay. so concentrated lime or lemon juice if we put this in a little bit of water and we were to take it and put it in water a little bit like this add the water into the lime lemon juice every morning another thing goes into your body pushes your blood toward alkaline Next week, you're going to understand all this acid, alkaline I'm talking about. But there's so much acid. Acid from cooked food, acid from preservatives, acid from additives, acid from things I've been taking. Always acid from my body, continually breaking down from the environment. So when I do this in the morning, I start my morning, I get up, I take a little bit of water, I put a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice, I drink that, and then I say, okay, I'm going to stretch. I go outside in front of my house, put down the yoga mat, I start stretching, I get Eric out there complaining, we do the stretching with the yoga, get him to, he stops complaining, oh, I'm feeling good, I feel so light. Then we go for a run, we run down to the coconut lady, I call her the coconut lady. Right now I'm working on her legs. We're using a number of things to get, she's going straight towards an ulcer in her legs, but it's coming along, we got about three more weeks, water's coming out. But we do coconut, we put coconut on her legs, put some wraps on her legs, get all this flowing, and then we get things moving. I come from coconut, and then of course, you know, you gotta have a little bit, you're cleansing now, but you can't be perfect. So, I run down to Albapan, grab myself a croissant, a little bit of green tea, plain croissant, don't want anything on it, a little bit of green tea, sit there in the sun, have my green tea, a little bit of croissant, run all the way back. Look, I've been exercising in the morning and every breakfast. Run all the way back towards my house, stop at the fruit lady, pick up some watermelon, maybe a little pineapple, go back home, have some watermelon, some pineapple, eat this. And now I'm feeling totally energized on my way to work. My blood chemistry shifted. I'm taking in more oxygen and I just sweated so I cleansed out anything from the night, stretched to relieve all that cramping in my body that could have happened. And this is what we will get into over time with the cleanse. More and more of this you will see little things at the end of the day. We put at the end of your cleanse every day. These are the three things we want you to do. Make sure you're having lots of water. 30 minutes of exercise every day. Making sure that you have your wheatgrass. All listed there every day the things you need to do. Okay. There is no reason why we need to have a lime juice with a preservative in it. So how would I go around this to make sure I don't get this preserved? Buy a lime. Buy a lime, buy a lemon, bring them home, squeeze it in a glass. Yeah, it's very, very, 
convenient to have it like It's this, very though. convenient, but there are some places that will not put a preservative in it. So you have to look around because no, one I'm, thing I, I, they, they, they asking, say I'm no, not no, sure. Oh, you don't know. Say, I don't they, believe. They I don't believe. Pie. They put in pie. No preservative. Yes, yeah. No, there's no. Yeah, they say there's that's unlikely that there's a preservative because these kinds of things, yeah, they say citrus, yeah. no, no preservative. Yeah, okay. but so it'll keep till back. December. It says. But yes, but you made a very important point. Very important, smart point. How am I supposed to read all these things that are on the back of all these boxes and know what's going on? How can I figure this out? Some of these names I've never seen before. And this is the thing you're always going to remember. When I pick up a box, if I can't read it, I don't eat it. That's it. If you can't read it, don't eat it. If I can't read what's on the back of that box, I can't understand what that is, that would be my first rule. My second rule I will teach you about ingredients. The first ingredient is the most abundant ingredient in the food. So later on we'll see when we pick up a cereal, what is the most abundant ingredient, first one. Next thing, when I look down at ingredients and it turns into a paragraph this long, I have to say to myself, there is nothing in nature that has a paragraph of ingredients this long in it. And if I keep putting this many ingredients in my body, by the end of the day, I may have put thousands of ingredients in it just before I had dinner. And I gotta be cautious about this. The body works in a balance. So much so in a certain period of time, so much so easily, always from nature. Nature will always give the right direction. Think about this. When was the last time the sun sent you a bill for all that energy it's been giving you? Never did that, did it? No. Okay, so nature's on your side. The planet is magnetic. It's always taking away the bad energy. Just allow the bad energy to go. Watermelons over here can be used for blood cleansing. Cucumbers over here can be helpful for your blood. Tomatoes we can be useful sometimes in the joints. Sometimes can make joints worse, sometimes better. But many of these things have many different types of effects. So as we walk around, uh, over here, onions. Onions can help to stimulate digestion. If my digestion's slow, it helps to stimulate digestion. Root vegetables like these squashes have tons of fiber. This is going to move digestion. And notice it's also green on the outside, so it has nutrients in it. Sometimes when I cut this open, I'll steam it, I'll bake it, I'll put a little bit of honey on top of it, maybe some cinnamon, and I'll even eat the green part because I know the green part has tons of minerals in it. Chew it down a little bit more, get what I need to get out of it. You find the same thing in other root vegetables. So this one looks like the shape of what? A uterus? Even is in the same color of that chakra of the body? These root vegetables are very good, very grounding, especially a woman has just come off her cycle, lost so much blood, need to re-nutrify this part of the body. What is it that you would say in nature has a lot of something that looks like blood in it? Let's see if we can find it. Maybe we'll find it something that have blood in it. It would be a vegetable. Do we find any beets around here? Maybe we see a beet. not exactly the easiest thing to find. Okay, come on, you can come this way. Beets are root vegetables, sometimes they're out of season. And beet is something that has a lot of iron. If I was, when I have my menstrual cycle, <laughs> no, men have menstrual cycles, let me let you know, they really do have menstrual cycles. <laughs> Usually about two days before the full moon and two days after, they're like rabid dogs. No matter what you say, there's no way to get through to them. They're going off the hook, their testosterone's roaming through their body. But I'm not a woman, so I don't bleed. But if you think about it, a woman's menstrual cycle flows like the ocean. It's always in a cycle that sits with the moon. And when this blood comes out, we have to re with all this iron. And all this iron can come from beets. You can also get this from many other different sources. But specifically on the cleanse, we can use beets in order to make sure that happens. Now I've noticed something else we can order. Sprouts. Here's sprouts up here. We have sunflower sprouts, mung bean sprouts. These sprouts and watercress. These sprouts particularly are like superfood. 
this kind of sprout because what has happened is this baby, this tiny little baby seed is starting to explode from the soil and it's going to grow very, very rapidly so the enzyme content is very, very high. This enzyme is an active part of the food, the part that keeps it alive. So when I make my salads and I make this big salad, I always put sprouts on top of it. Always put sprouts on top of it because now I'm getting enzymes, more vitamins, more minerals, more nutrients. It's making it easier for me to digest the food. This is going to make it so that that salad that I took in, I'm going to get a lot more nutrients out of it. Here are all the herbs, rosemary, thyme, oregano, sage. I'm going to take all four of these, put this in a blender, olive oil, a little bit of um, some vinegar. Maybe I put some onion in there, maybe a little bit of garlic, mix them together. Garlic is an antibiotic. This one helps with digestion. This one's going to help a little bit with digestion and circulation. This one will help with nervous disorders. This one will create more of an aroma, can help the skin. So all of these things are things that we could see could be very powerful. So now we took that one salad, got as many nutrients as we could out of it as possible. It was organic, put sprouts on top of it, made a dressing that had herbs in it. We basically just made a super meal. So now we have a super amount of energy to be able to go to work that day, come back from lunch and be able to actually get my work done more efficiently, get my stuff done, know what's going on, feel clear in my mind, get more fluid from my food, more water and nutrients, more fiber, then I know my de digestive system starts moving better. Burdock root is a blood cleanser. This one you could chop up or even put in your, when you make your blended uh, vegetable soups, which you're going to learn how to make, your green soups, you can put some burdock root there. Mushrooms are a nightshade that can be good for many things. Usually, they can be very helpful with the immune system, more of a reishi mushroom. It's also a nightshade like a tomato. And the capsicums, uh, uh, bell peppers. Sometimes when you have a heat-causing condition in your body, like upset digestive stomach, it's not good to put mushrooms on top of that. Or if you have joint conditions, it can make that a little bit more inflammatory. So this is the reason why when you come to us and you want to find out what's going on, we can actually balance these things and pull some things out, put other things in, because we're using basically five element theory in Chinese medicine to know when somebody's out of balance, is there too much water? Is there too much heat in digestion? Is there too much heat in the thyroid? This way we can figure out how to calm this heat down in order to make the changes that we know we want to make in the body. You're going to find organic and organic section. Hold on. Do you know about Doikon, the King's Project? Oh, this is, and, and this one is to create more of a local agriculture? Yeah, but this is the King's Project and it's all organic and it's yes. a lot less expensive. Okay, so than here. The King's Project growing locally organic food. What did you call it again? Doikon. 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 So I would look for this label and I would definitely start to take this in because it, it is going to be organic. Notice the greens, the royal crown. The blues. And it should be all over town in almost every store. So that you can make sure that you're getting whole organic food. Here we have a fennel. Definitely something to help bring your blood sugar down. Fennel seeds. Celery. Excellent for helping build bone. What does it look like? Like a bone. Right? Yes. So all of these things from nature have jobs that they do. They have a reason for doing what they do. Broccoli has anti-cancer agents in it, like lycopene. Cauliflower has many of these anti-cancer agents in them. This cabbage, definitely high fiber, moving digestion. If you're having problems going to the bathroom, we need to have more cabbage in there. A little bit steamed, want to soften it up a little bit. The question about the carrots over here, if the carrots are not coming from the King's Project and it doesn't say organic on it, it's not an organic vegetable. But a root vegetable, something that's under the ground, is going to be less likely to absorb large amounts of pesticides. So when it's under the ground, it is much better. We could see more organic salad ideas up here. I'm sure that if we look at berries, if we were to go over to the berries, I would never buy a berry unless it was organic. And the main reason for that is that it's a very soft skin. And a lot of insects like berries. So if this is not organic, if it's not organic, I'm going to have this one because I know that this is going to absorb a large amount of pesticides. We're going to go over this next week, but the harder the, the harder the surface, the less likely it's going to absorb them. But
So it's around, you just need to. I think it would be interesting to go to 7 Eleven. And, and, and just see if there's anything in a 7 Eleven. I've done a, I've done a video shoot. I did a video shoot in, a, in, a, in a not South Central, but it was in East, uh, East Oakland, in the poorest place in East Oakland, in which we went through a. Not a 7-Eleven, but a, um, a 99 cent store. Yes. And we found a way to do a cleanse in a 90 size, 99 cent store for the poorest people in all of California. And we did it in 24 minutes and showed them how they can do a cleanse in the 99 cent store. How oh. Not ex do how? So many people's organic stuff is expensive. Oh, there was not any organic stuff in the 99 cent store, but we found other ways to do a cleanse. Sure. If you, if you have the will, you will find the way. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I think this is When you go out on the, the streets of Thailand that are famous for street food, uh, what do you order that works for you? If I have to do it, I will find something there, probably some tom, and then make them take some of the stuff out. Okay. This will work for me. Thank you very much. You're, You're welcome. Very nice nice Thank to you. meet you. Cheers. See you around. Yeah. Thanks a lot, John. Oh. Okay, so there they go. Thanks for watching. This is the Snowbiz Now Entertainment Network.